أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأراضين أرواحنا لتراب مقدمه الفدا الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا ولعنة الدائمة السرمدية على أعدائهم وقتلتهم وغاص بحقوقهم ومنكر فضائلهم ومناقبهم من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفه قولي أما بعد فقد قال المعصوم عليه الصلاة والسلام صغارنا وكبارنا سوى صدق المعصوم عليه الصلاة والسلام صلوات I extend my heartful condolences to Imam of our time حجة ابن الحسن صاحب العصر والزمان عليه السلام on the occasion and on the commemoration of the shahadat of our ninth holy Imam, Imam Muhammad al-Jawad alayhi abdul salati was salam. And I extend my condolences to the mu'mineen and mu'minat gathered here and worldwide. And I pray to Almighty Allah that He may grant us the ziyarat of A'immat Ahl al-Bayt, especially the ninth Imam, Imam al-Jawad, insha'Allah, in this world, this year and every year insha'Allah and uh, may he grant us their shafa'a in the hereafter and may he hasten the reappearance of Hujjat ibn al-Hasan sahib al-Asr wa al-Zaman alayhi salam waj'alna min a'wanihi wa ansarihi wa shi'atihi wa muhabbihi wa al-ta'ilina tahta liwaihi wa al-mustashhadina bayna yadayhi birahmatika ya arham al-rahimin wa sallallahu ala muhammad wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin if it will today as an example a marja is declared to be a nine year old boy what would happen? If at all, now we are not talking about whether we can do his taqrid or not. I'm just giving you a scenario that a nine-year-old boy is declared a marja, say for example. What would happen in the Shia world? Immediately there would be uproar throughout the Shia world with questions. How can a nine-year-old become a marja? People have studied for 60 years in the house and they have been training. And this nine-year-old boy, how can he become a marja? How can he? Isn't it? There will be some people who would say, all right, nine-year-old boy becoming a marja, blessing. They would go and kiss his hands. But some people would say, look at the Shias now. Nine-year-old boy, they will be following him now. He's fatwa. They'll reject the system in entirety. And some people will doubt. They'll say, what happened? Nine-year-old boy? I don't believe in him. This was the exact same scenario which the ninth holy Imam, Imam al-Jawad faced immediately after assuming the Imam, after the shahadat of Imam al-Rida Exactly the same. People in the Shia world were in three parts. Some were excited, they said, son of Imam al -Rada. Sure. He is the Imam of the time. Why not? Some say, nine-year-old Imam, come on. It's not a joke. And some say, I don't believe it. Now the Imamat has come to such a stage, nine-year-old we have to follow. 
we have been all these years. Do you see that? The ninth Imam was facing the same challenge. How to face it? What to do? The responsibility of a marja would be to guide us on the Furu'a Deen. What is wajibat? What is muharramat? That's all. Nothing more. If you believe, if you follow a marja, okay, if at all you don't follow a marja, you don't become a pagan or you don't become a non-believer. But if at all you don't believe a right imam, من مات ولم يعرف إمام زمانه مات ميتة جاهلية. It's a big responsibility. If you don't get the right Imam, we die as pagans, we die as non-believers. So if at all I don't believe in a nine-year-old marja, say for example, I won't die as a pagan or I won't die as a kafir, a non-believer. But if at all I don't find the Imam of my time, I'm lost. Totally. That it was the responsibility of the Shias at the time when the ninth Imam assumed the Imamate after the Shahadat of his father. People were not following an Alim who would tell them this is halal, this is haram, this is wajib, this is. They were following an Imam, a Hujja of Almighty Allah. If at all there is no Hujja, there is no representative of Almighty Allah on the earth, the entire system would collapse. And what is the system that Imam is controlling and which is in the hands of Imam? What is the system? بكم ينزل الغيث وبكم يمسك السماء أن تقع على الأرض إلا بإذنه through حجة through the Imam of the time Almighty Allah distributes his blessings all our du'as are accepted through the existence of the 12th Imam or the Imam of the time of the Imam of the time of the Hujja of the time. Everything would stop immediately if the Hujja is not there. That responsibility, I'll just uh, explain this as an example. Today's program, Alhamdulillah, many who have put in their time and efforts and the organizers who have tried to bring in Mu'mini over here and Mu'minat and they have arranged some food or whatever, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about the food, okay? There is, there is, okay, right. Uh, take away, take away. <laughs> All right. But whatever they have organized to invite so many people to organize, to invite reciters, to uh, plan the time, it takes time. It's an effort. So much, so many days before it has to be planned just for one meal. One meal? One gathering? And Imam and the Hujja is what? Tanazzalul malaikatu wal ruhu fiha bi izna rabbihim min kulli amr. Every Laylatul Qadr, the Imam receives the entire program of from that Laylatul Qadr to the next Laylatul Qadr, distribution of the risk. Hayat, Tawfiq, Hidayah. Who is approving? The Hujjah of the time. He is approving. Nabi Suleiman. Nabi Suleiman, when he was the king, Mulkan la yambaghi li ahadin min ba'di. Almighty Allah granted him the kingdom 
And I'm purposely not uh, translating all the ayats of the Quran, of course, because you people know Arabic better than me. So I'm not translating it. I hope that everyone uh, understands the meaning of them. Uh, on that note, please recite one loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Nabi Suleiman, it is said that Nabi Suleiman said, Ya Allah, I want to thank you by feeding your creatures one time, only one time. Normally we have here, some people have twice breakfast and dinner, and some people have three times meal. Even the brunch in the afternoon, that is also risk, isn't it? One time, I'm talking about one responsibility of feeding. That approval of the entire year of risk of each and every individual, not only human, every creature. We know, we don't know, there are so many creatures which are not on our list of the scientists also. We have not discovered them. We don't know how many creatures live. On this earth, where we are proud to live, we don't know what creation is there in other worlds, which are not discovered yet, in the universes, in the galaxies. That entire system is in the hands of the Hujja of the time. Nabi Suleiman says, Ya Allah, I want to feed you once, one time only, one time, your creation, just to thank you. Almighty Allah said, you can't do it. Nabi Suleiman insisted, Allah said, okay, I give you a chance, go ahead. He prepared the army of Jinnat to prepare for the promised day and the promised night for, say, breakfast or say, lunch, for example. So many months of preparation and so many warehouses of food storage. On the appointed day, Nabi Suleiman was sitting on the island. Now it's the time to feed everyone. One meal and a fish. And they say in the Rawaya that a fish comes out of the sea and says, Ya Nabi Allah, I'm hungry. Nabi Suleiman says, People, is the food ready? They say, just wait a little. So the fish says, Ya Nabi Allah, whenever I was hungry, I never waited up till now. Today I have to wait for my risk. All right, no worries. After some time, this fish returns and says, Ya Nabi Allah, I'm ready to eat. Nabi Suleiman says, the food is ready. The Jinnah start pouring the food in front of this one fish. It eats away one warehouse, the second warehouse, and the third warehouse, and warehouse after warehouse. And Nabi Suleiman is looking. All these months, what we have gathered is just in the belly of this one. All the warehouses empty. And the fish says, Ya Nabi Allah, can I have some more? He said, Nabi Suleiman, he said, Oh Nabi Suleiman, why did you take the responsibility when you can't feed one time? I'm talking about one time feeding of a Nabi of Almighty Allah. The Hujjah of Almighty Allah takes care of not the risk of this world or the human only. He takes care of the risk of the entire creation, Al Alameen. Nine year old boy assumes the power of Imama after his father. Eighty ulama and religious scholars of the time, they gather around to discuss the validity of the Imama of the ninth Imam. They say, how can all that responsibility a nine year old can hold? When all, every single Almighty Allah distributes through Hujjah, nine-year-old, how can he assume so much power? It's not possible. They said, what is the test? 
Okay, we'll go to Medina and we'll ask him certain questions. If at all he can answer like his father's forefathers, then we'll accept his mouth. So a great, a big group goes to Medina to ask a nine-year-old boy questions. And as soon as these people start questioning, before they question, the nine-year-old imam gives them their question and the answer. Then, you know, out of the desperation, these people forget the questions. So the imam says, you were thinking of asking me so-and-so question, Imam al-Jawad. Say, you were ready to ask me so-and-so question, why didn't you ask me? This is the answer to your so-and-so question. So people saw that this is not the Imam, he is the son of Bab Madina to the Alam. He is the Ujja of Almighty Allah. But after that also there were three sections, there were some who accepted the Imam, some who said, no, 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 we can't. It's integrity problem. They went to Waqifa, to Imam, 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 uh, Imam al, the seventh Imam, Imam al Qadim alayhi salatu wasalam. And the third one, they just rejected the Imam. They said, no, 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 we can't follow you. And that is the reason you will see that this ninth Imam alayhi salatu wasalam in the life, life of ninth Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, there are so many explosions of the miracles where the Imam alayhi salatu wasalam was giving in so much to his lovers without them asking for the help, Imam would go and extend his help. So much so that he was named Al-Jawad, Al-Jawad giving without application. Al-Jawad means you don't have to ask. He knows what is in your heart. We pray that those who have gathered here and those who could not come, may our heart be open to Imam Al-Jawad and let Imam Al-Jawad do what he is doing always. Insha'Allah Ta'ala. And finally, the one who was giving limitless not only did he assume the imama at a young age but he was killed also at a young age 25 years is an age to die when a youth dies it's a it's a painful death for everyone but if at all the youth dies to a natural death, it is different. But if at all he is killed and poisoned, the ninth Imam was only 25 years old when Mu'atib Sim al Abbasi Malaun poisoned him. But Imam alayhi salatu was salam, ninth Imam, was poisoned in Baghdad. And his son, the young son, the tenth Imam, was in Medina. But when the final hours of the Shahada came close, the tenth Imam والسلام, reached his father from Medina by Ijaz, by Mu'jiza. He traveled and he reached the last moments of his father. And then he gave ghusl to his father, kafan to his father. And then he saw how the people of Mu'mineen of Baghdad they buried Imam Al-Jawad with respect in Kadhamiya. But my heart takes me to the plains of Karbala, where I can see there is a body which is tattered and torn. There is no one to bury this body. <laughs> and there is no one to carry his beard and bury him. No one to dare to give kafan to Hussein ibn Ali. 
Why? Because his children are imprisoned. Why? Because Sajjad is prisoned and he is in chains and he is taken from one place to another from Kufa, Prishan and Sham to Medina. وَسَيَعْلَمُ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا آلَ مُحَمَّدٍ أَيَّ مَنْ قَلَبِي يَنْقَلِبُونَ إِنَّا لِلَّهُ وَإِنَّا إِلَيَّ رَاجِعُونَ أَلَا لَعْنَةُ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ I pray to Almighty Allah to grant us the ziyarat of Ahl al-Bayt in this world and the shafa'a in the hereafter and may he hasten the reappearance of Hujjat ibn al-Hassan sahib al-Asr wa al-Zaman alayhi salatu wa salam wa jalna min a'wanihi wa ansarihi wa shi'atihi wa muhibbihi wa ta'ilina tahta liwa'ih wa al-mustashadina bayna yadayh bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin wa sallallahu ala muhammad wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin